So I'm just going to show um, the main parts of taking apart this washing machine. Um, so this is a Bosch SPS 40C 12GB slash 14 model. Um, okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, disconnect the water. So turn off the inlet water um, switch and then disconnect the terminals and uh, make sure you've got uh, the towels because there's going to be quite a bit of water um, as you move the machine on. and the pipes. Um, I've just used a cork to block this one and I used a cork to block the other end actually. Um, so I've actually taken most of the screws out. This is just to show kind of how to which bits to take off because it's actually quite a bit of a pain. So the first bit to take off is the top of the machine. This is actually pretty difficult, um, surprisingly. It's very stiff, but there are two little catches on each side, and you just uh... oh god. Required some sort of kind of like pulling it towards you and then away motion. Uh, so we can take that off. So next we want to take off the sides. Um, so to do that there is one screw at this side, one screw down here and that's it. Then they can just Straight off. The sides are off. You want to take off this bottom piece, and what you do is you, uh, well, what I do anyway, is I lift the machine up slightly and then uh, pull down. It kind of unlatches. So I try that. slots out and that makes it easy to take off the front um, and put it back um, so the front uh, just has three screws here 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 and then okay so with the front off um, you can now um, try and undo the bottom part um, so we want to take these off um, on each side and then unhook the, eh, can't really do it with one hand, but it's the, if you pull it up and off, hang on. <laughs> it pulls, um, get it off, so she attaches to the spring, uh, which um, helps with the door. And then uh, what you want to try and do is um, take off, so you, the aim here is to be able to access um, the, uh, actually there, oh, usually there, there are two screws, one here, one here, and then this, this, this thing should come up. Yeah, that's a fairly important part. And then you can sort of, you can access the underneath, uh, and you can see here we've got the wastewater pump, and the wastewater comes out there and uh, the uh, oh, main electronics unit, control unit is here, the uh, tur turbidity sensor in here, uh, there is the um, heat, heat pump um, with the motor there and the heating element here. Um, so you can access the electronics which means that you can you can you can test whether the uh, heating element has gone from this point. You don't have to take anything apart um, just by undo it, taking off this um, these connections, and then you'll have access to the two terminals where you can check if it's around 20 ohms with the multimeter across those t terminals. Um, but to actually take out the pump and put a new one back in is 
I'm not sure if it's possible to be honest because there's no space uh, between the pump um, to take it out so I think you do need to loosen at least um, this this grey bottom part from the main part of the dishwasher um, and the next step to do that is go around uh, so uh, here there's this kind of little bit of metal which was bent round um, I've unbent it and uh, which needs to be unbent so that you can pull, take this off and once those, that's been done on both sides um, with a bit of force and maybe turn the dishwasher on its side you can maybe maybe with a, a whack a couple of wax with um, a rubber hammer or something um, you can kind of get off um, most of the you can get it off and which leaves you access to the pump and take out this Ooh. and that and then what you want to do is unscrew these four screws take those out and that will loosen the um the, the, the part of the um washing machine which has the the heat pump and quite a lot of the electronic stuff and lets you take it out this is the main component under the um dishwasher um so um so what have we got here i've got the turbidity sensor which goes in there um this is where the exhaust the um the outflow wastewater pump slots and that's where the wastewater goes um, on this side you've got um, another motor um, which forces the water upwards um, and into the higher parts of the dishwasher and here you have the heat pump so you've got a motor here and um, a heating element here and you don't have to take this apart but I've just done it to have a look so this is the motor and this is the heating element and uh, you can test this with I mean here you can kind of quite clearly see if it focuses that we've got a uh, we've got kind of a open circuit and there's actually a little burn burn darkened mark in, in there but without having to um, look visually for a problem with the heating element we can test it with uh, a multimeter um, so what should we do um, we look at two pins um, uh, this one and this one we put these to those pins and we check that the uh, resistance is about 20 ohms um, if it's open circuit um, then we know that there's a fault with the heating element if it's 20 ohms then it's fine showing you what happens if I put the um, multimeter on the ohm setting across those two um, so one is the live current and one is the return um, and so we get just a zero mega ohm reading, which effectively means there's no current flowing between those two points, which means they're disconnected because it's open circuit, because we've got the, 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 the um, heating element has overheated and broken the circuit. Now if you compare that to a new pump, The new pump, if I um, yeah, if I put the um, multimeter, multimeter across those two terminals, I get something that's about 22 ohms resistance, which makes sense because if I look at the old, um, if I look at the old heating element, it says that oh, can't really read it, but it says that it's 2.08 kilowatts and 230 volts and I've got a rough approximation is the power in kilowatts 
um, equals current times volts. Um, so that would mean uh, about 2 kilowatts divided by 230, which gives us something like 10 amps. Um, and then, which, which is kind of normal. And then if you want to get the resistance, you've got the identity uh, voltage equals current times resistance. Um, so we can get the resistance by doing voltage divided by current. So that would be 230 volts divided by 10 amps, which gives us about 23 ohms resistance, which is what we saw on the um, multimeter.